the St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church meeting at Yale Avenue Presbyterian Church. Welcome. Welcome. So welcome to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church of Tulsa, Oklahoma. We are so pleased that you have joined with us and worship together this wonderful Sunday. And we want to ask you guys to pray for our church, our membership, especially this difficult and wondrous time. So may the peace of our Jesus Christ be with you all. And let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship our Almighty God as we receive this morning's prayer route. Please join with me, call to worship this morning. Come share the ample treasure of a new life in Christ. We, we celebrate our unity as God's people. Christ has died and Christ is risen. Christ is with us forevermore. God is our advocate, our helper, our comforter in times of need.
Please join with me, call to confession and silent prayer. Let us draw near to the one who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Holy God, too often we are like the one they called Doubting Thomas. We find it hard to believe what we have not seen, even hard to accept your love when we have known it directly and felt the wounds carried by others on our behalf. Forgive us, we pray, for our doubt and our unbelief. This week, assurance of God's pardon. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Thanks be to God. Our reading today is from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many owned lands or houses, sold them, and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Scripture reading today from the Gospel according to John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. Now, it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had stayed were locked for fear of the Jews. And Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace, peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. 
As the Father has sent me, so I send you. So when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 24, 23. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Last week, on Easter Sunday, we heard in John's version of the story of that first Easter that Mary Magdalene came to the tomb while it was still dark. Dark is a sign of danger, being out on the streets at night by yourself, and dark is a symbol of, of evil. John says that the light came into the world, but some people loved the dark because their, their deeds were evil. So we have this scene of that first Sunday beginning in the dark. And now at the end of that day, John says it was evening and the disciples were gathered together and the doors were locked out of fear, out of fear. We can understand that fear. Jesus was killed. Uh, they could also be arrested and killed. We don't know, and they did not know. Now, Mary, Mary had seen Jesus, and she had told everyone about Jesus raised from the dead. John and Peter had seen the empty tomb. Surely they could believe, and yet, and yet they did not. In Luke, it says that the men, the disciples, thought that the women's story was an idle tale. You know, you can't really trust the women. They, they get so excited, right? And yet, and yet they had heard the good news. In this day, Jesus had been raised from the dead. It, it should have given them a sense of confidence, a, a sense of, of joy, of excitement. And, and yet they were locked in out of fear. Locked in out of fear. We, we too can, can understand that sense of fear because we have been locked in for a year now. We know lockdowns. We know closings of businesses. We know schools locked down and then opened and then only distance learning and then maybe back into the classrooms. We know that sense of things being locked down, don't we? Even churches, even churches have been locked down for a, a, a long time for in-person worship. Locked up out of fear. Uh, we, we have a, a, a sense of maybe things are getting better. People are getting vaccinated. Uh, there, there's some sense of hope and, and yet and yet the numbers seem to be creeping back up around the world. We're not out of this yet. We're not out of this yet. We are still, in a sense, locked in, out of fear. And in the midst of that fear on that first Easter Sunday, John says that Jesus came to the disciples. And, and he showed them his hands and his side and said to them, peace, peace be with you. In the midst of their fears, Jesus 
brought peace. Now, it's true in that day, peace was kind of a routine, hello, how are you kind of thing. And yet I believe Jesus was truly giving them peace. His, his presence with them was, was saying they could know peace that is deeper than a human understanding than just a hello, how are you? Peace that comes from an, an inner certainty of God with us in Jesus Christ. You know, in the very earliest part of John, it says that the Word became flesh or human and dwelt with us. Eugene Peterson's The Message paraphrase says that the Word moved into the neighborhood. Jesus came to us. Jesus was with those first disciples. Jesus is with us even today. Now, sometimes as Christians, we think of the whole purpose of the Christian life is to live such a way that, that we will escape from this world and when we die, we'll go to heaven. We will be with Jesus. Now, we can affirm that, but here the emphasis is not on us leaving the world. It is on Jesus coming to us in this world with all of its fears and lockdowns and, and anxieties and, and uncertainties. Jesus, Jesus is with his disciples then and, and now as well. Peace, peace be with you. They, they couldn't quite accept it. And, and, and so Jesus had to say it yet a second time. Peace, peace be with you. And then it says they were overcome with joy to see and know that Jesus had been raised from the dead. In this story of that first Easter, in the midst of fears, in the midst of lockdowns, we hear the presence of Jesus bringing peace and joy into our lives. And then Jesus went on to say, as the Father has sent me, so too I send you. As the Father sent Jesus, so Jesus sends us. That's the mission of the Christian life, the mission of the church. As God sent Jesus into the world to, to teach and preach and heal, to, to eat with tax collectors and sinners and lepers and prostitutes as God sent Jesus into the world. So Jesus sends us into the world to be his presence now. And, and how can we do that? Well, the scriptures say that Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. There's a pun here because spirit and breath and wind are all the same. So it could be Jesus spirited on them. Jesus sent the wind to them. Jesus gave them the Holy Spirit. Luke talks about the giving of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. John wants us to know that in Jesus Christ, as we go out in mission, as we go out in service, the Holy Spirit is there with us. God's presence in Jesus Christ is, is, is with us to keep us going, to give us the, the strength and the possibilities of, of serving him. And, and then he concludes with this, the authority of God's people. If anyone forgives someone, they are forgiven. We have, uh, over the centuries, argued over how we in the church interpret that 
authority, that power. I think it is a way of talking about the preaching of grace and love and forgiveness in Jesus Christ. I think it is our responsibility to say what is true, but then also to reach out in forgiveness and grace to the whole world. Some of you know, I was uh, raised in a Baptist church till I was in the eighth grade, at which time my mother changed churches and so the whole family changed churches. I was perfectly happy in the Baptist church at the time. But we became Presbyterian, but uh, I, I, I still have a, a, a fondness for the Southern Baptist, and, and therefore a sense of pain when I read about something that happened in Atlanta. That in itself was horrible. A young man killed eight people because of something he called a sexual addiction. It, it has caused all kind of trauma because so many of the people killed were Asian Americans. And that is significant. But it is even more significant that he simply killed for any reason, anybody, and, and the church then kicked him out. The Southern Baptist Church of which he was a member kicked him out. Now I understand, I understand their thinking. Baptist churches are covenant communities. Members covenant together to live uh, uh, together. A and he had broken that covenant. But at the same time, who needed God's grace more than this young man? Who needs to hear God's forgiveness than this young man? The church needs to hold up standards. Killing is wrong. Prejudice is wrong. Racism is wrong. Sexual addiction, addictions are wrong. This young man was wrong. And yet, and yet, is he not still within the forgiving love of Jesus Christ? In this Sunday night, as Christians are still, to some extent, locked up in fear, can we not again hear that word of grace? In the midst of our fears, Jesus is with us. In the midst of our fears, Jesus brings peace. In the midst of our fears, we know joy. In the midst of our fears, we have purpose and work to do. We are called on ministry and mission to serve the risen Lord. In the midst of our fears, we reach out with grace and forgiveness and love for a world that is hurting in the dark. It was evening of that first day. The disciples were locked into the room out of fear and Jesus came to be with them as he is with us even today, hallelujah, Christ the Lord is risen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we too know the fears of those first disciples. We too know the sense of danger and difficulty of anxieties and of sleepless nights, we too know. And yet we too know the good news that Jesus has come to be with us, has 
breathed on us the Holy Spirit, has challenged us to live out our lives, sent by Jesus as he was sent by his Father. Lord God, be with us in our fears, in our doubts, in our disbelief. Be with us day by day, we pray. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen.
We continue in the Easter season, following up on the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that each Sunday we come together in spirit, if not in person, and we are open to God's spirit and God's word, and then we go out in service as the Father sent the Son, so the Son sends us out. So as we go, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the communion, the Holy Spirit, is with us this day and every day. Amen.